In this video, we're going to show you how to install AudioCypher v3 on a Mac. So the first thing you'll want to do is unzip the file that you got. And inside of there, you're going to see Windows and Mac installers. So you'll click on the Mac installer folder. And here there's VST3, standalone, and AU components. VST3 is common for Fruity Loops and Ableton and a number of other DAWs. The AU components are mostly used by Apple products like Logic Pro. Uh, the standalone product will actually sit by itself. You'll be able to use that outside of a DAW, and you can also drag MIDI from that into your DAW. Now keep in mind the standalone is the only version that has the playback controls. When we open up the VST3 or the AU component installer, it's going to take you through a standard process. And once you're done, you're going to want to take the VST3 or AU file that you get and make sure that it's in the correct folder. So what you can do is click on go in your menu in the top. And when you see this drop down, what you can actually do is hit um, your Apple button to be able to see this extra option that says library. And when you click on library, you're going to go to library, click on this instead of users, and then go down to audio. And you'll be able to find audio somewhere here in this list. Okay, so just keep searching for it until you find it. There it is. And then once you're here, you can see plugins. And from plugins, you'll see either VST3 or VST or components, etc. So for the AU file, you're going to want to put that into your component file. If it's VST3, you're going to want to put it in this folder instead. And so that's where those will go. And from there, your DAWs should be able to automatically pick up that they're there. You're going to see them alongside other tools that you may have. Um, so there's that. And then if we go back to the desktop and take a look at this again. Let's also talk about the standalone. So the standalone is automatically going to be added to your applications folder. So that's um, usually accessible to your favorites here. You can also um, add it to your toolbar on the bottom if you'd like to, but that's how that's going to work. So let's go ahead and open up FL Studio just as an example. And you can see here in the mixer, because it's a MIDI plugin, essentially you're going to be able to load it in through the mixer and just click on Audio Cipher, and it's going to be right here. Now we have installer uh, instructions for Ableton as well and other things um, on our website, so you can go ahead and check that out if you have specific questions. Um, you'll notice again that there are no uh, playback controls here, so in order to access that, instead what we're going to do is open up Audio Cipher, and from here you can see we have uh, the additional standalone with the playback controls. So if I wanted to audition different ideas here, I can press play and I will actually be able to listen to those. That's true for both the melody and the chord generation. Okay, um, and so that pretty much covers it. Now, uh, you're gonna see a slightly different interface here because we've made a couple of updates to this prior to um, launch. So, uh, but basically all the core functionality is here. And the same principle applies to both of these. So you're gonna just be able to drag MIDI from this into your DAW. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Logic as well so we can take a look at a second example. Okay, so when you drag your AU component into the component file, uh, similarly, you're going to see Audio Cipher becomes available here as a MIDI effects. So if there was nothing here, I could create a, uh, a new instrument track just to demonstrate. So you would see there's a blank MIDI effects. You just click on this, go to Audio Units, Audio Cipher Technologies, and there you go. So this is where you'll be able to access the same feature that we just saw a moment ago with VST3s in Fruity Loops. Now, if you wanted to use the standalone plugin, you can do so. And what you're going to do is just type in anything you want. You can drag it to MIDI here. And right now, because we have chord generator selected, it's going to look like this. If you wanted to uh, do melodies instead, you can switch it over. You can randomize the rhythm, and that's going to give you different length notes, as you can see here. You can also do randomized rhythm for a chord generator, so it looks like that. Now, one thing I like to point out is that you can also um, switch over to random chords. So now each one of the chords will have their own rhythm. And even as I drag these in, we're going to have different rhythms and different chords. This is a really great way to get a lot of new ideas quickly using a single word or a phrase. And we can use longer words. We can say anything that we want to, anything that we want to. And if I go ahead and delete these, bring this back in, you see we now have a longer phrase. Um, this is recommended if you want to just get a, a longer piece of content to work with, and maybe you're going to grab certain ideas in this that stick out to you. When you find something that you like, obviously you can just grab it, get rid of the rest, and then paste it in there and start working on it from there. So that's uh, one workflow I recommend. Another thing you can also try is once you have a chord progression you like, since it's in whatever key that you chose, you can switch back to Melody Generator and you can drag that on here and you'll see now this is actually in the same key. So if we wanted to experiment and use the same key signature with a couple of different melodies and different rhythms, we can keep adding them and auditioning them. And we can do the same thing again with chords. 
So now as we play these back, we're going to hear um, the same word through different chord iterations and different melody iterations. So that pretty much summarizes how you can use the audio component in your DAW as well as your standalone and uh, the VST3. Thanks for watching.